Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Trade is back on the global and African agenda. While US President Donald Trump has taken a strong protectionist stance, Africa is talking free trade. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Africa is lit a fire under plans for a continental free trade agreement. Yes, this came quite rapidly in terms of trade agreements. You know, usually these, the gestation period for these is many, many years. And in Kigali, uh, uh, Rwanda last week, led by the president there, there was this move to sign an African continental free trade agreement. 44 countries actually signed up to that document. And uh, countries such as our, South Africa, uh, decided that uh, it was premature to do that. I mean, um, that there was there was a, uh, a general agreement uh, of quite a number of pages, which uh, didn't have a tariff schedule attached and a number of the other annexes that generally come with a trade agreement. So the decision was that we would sign a declaration to say that while we agreed with the, the intention and the spirit and the content, really, of that continental free trade agreement, uh, South Africa uh, you know, legally wasn't really in a position uh, to go ahead with a signing or something like that, which it needs to negotiate, consult with stakeholders. Uh, that's our process here, legal process. Usually these sort of trade agreements go through a NEDLAC process where business and labor have, are consulted. And then obviously parliament has to be involved as well uh, in any, any uh, trade agreement. So the, it, it, was an, it was actually uh, encouraging in some ways to see that you know that, that Africa is starting to meet um, deadlines around uh, sort of a, uh, an integration uh, agenda, but on the other hand, I think the, the, you know the, there's, there are a number of gaps with the the general agreement that was signed by by some, and uh, South Africa I think is going to take some time before it can get to a point of signing uh, a free trade agreement on a continent-wide basis. Will the single market flame keep burning, or is there a risk of it being snuffed out? Well, I think there is that uh, element of caution here because of the fact that it was a little bit rushed and there weren't these other elements, the key elements, uh, to uh, allow for it to be a real implementable trade agreement. The, our trade and industry minister, Dr. Rob Davies, described it as a circuit board. So the framework is there, but you need the different components to add to that circuit board to make it into a workable uh, implementation uh, document and those weren't, aren't yet there and those I think there's a commitment uh, to try and get to that level but there's going to be uh, I think it's going to be a long journey and the, the danger here when South Africa doesn't sign and then Nigeria doesn't sign the two uh, very large parts of uh, the African economy I think there's a danger you know that it can be stillborn but I think uh, the South Africa's approach is to say no let's support it we are going to endorse this uh, as, as a concept and as something that we should as Africa be uh, striving to, towards. And it's more than just an aspiration. There is, there's a commitment now from a number of countries towards this. But uh, of course, um, there is always that danger that you move too fast and then it becomes uh, unimplementable. I think from South Africa's perspective, you know, a lot of work is really going into the trilateral free trade agreement, the TFTA. That work's been going on for a number of years and is quite advanced to the point where, you know, that, that involves uh, the Southern African development community. And pr principally, from a South African perspective, we have SACU, because we always have to negotiate all our trade agreements as a SACU block, as a, we, as a customs union. And then you have the East African community and COMESA. And uh, even there, um, there are some countries and blocks that are more ready and willing to move ahead. Um, and it's a, it's a sort of a more iterative process and incremental. And there, things did stall a little bit last year on the TFTA, but we've already signed uh, that, uh, that document. So it's not just what we did with uh, the uh, Continental Free Trading Agreement, which was a declaration to sign. We've actually signed that document. Uh, the issue is now we've been uh, sort of scrubbing the text and getting it, uh, the tariff schedule in place primarily with uh, countries in the East African community, Kenya being a key uh, country there. And it looks like after Kigali, that's back on track after the delays of last year, linked uh, both to the politics in South Africa and the politics in Kenya, which I think destabilized things somewhat. And it's, there's talk now uh, from uh, Minister Davies that by May, 
we could be seeing some sort of signing between SACU and the uh, East African community or Kenya. And then after that, there'll be a, a move to try and get to the same point with Egypt. So this is the Cape to Cairo type free trade agreement spanning from South Africa in the south all the way up the east uh, coast of Africa to, to um, Egypt. And it seems there uh, progress is going to be made and we could see some uh, uh, sort of material and real progress uh, in the next couple of months. In the meantime, South Africa is also trying to put out a trade fire with the US. Yes, so uh, Donald Trump has announced a, a whole range of tariff uh, interventions. These were primarily on steel and aluminium, a 25% ad valorem duty on, uh, on steel and another 10% on aluminium articles. And these cover a range of products, steel products, and a range of aluminium products that uh, South Africa does produce. But we are a very small player there. So less than 1%, I think, of the uh, imports of steel into America and less than 1.6% of aluminium articles into, uh, into America. So we haven't been exempted. Now, when Donald Trump did the proclamation in early March, around 8th of March. He gave exemption for Canada and Mexico, a part of NAFTA, um, with some caveats. He then later, when announcing a, a, a raft of uh, protection measures against China, uh, added a number of other exclusions to so-called allies. And we weren't included in that, which was interesting, nor was Japan. But uh, the European Union and uh, from the BRICS bloc, Brazil, uh, were included as being exempted from the metals tariff. So the process now for South Africa is to see whether we can, under the rules allowed for, for exemptions uh, with the US, uh, can engage with that process and try and get our steel and aluminium products exempted. Uh, there was an initial feeling that our aluminium products, which were already going into um, America under GOA, duty-free, quota-free, uh, we're exempt, but that doesn't seem to be the, the, the case. It seems that this duty applies even to, to the AGOA countries. So th there is now this engagement with the US, and the US has sort of set uh, a few criteria for exemption. One of them would we consider a quota, and the response from South Africa has been a, a affirmative that we will consider a quota on our steel and aluminum exports uh, to the US. And then obviously, to give some assurances that we won't be a conduit should we get exemption for other cheap goods coming from other jurisdictions into the US. So there's those, these criteria. So we've made our initial formal submission. We've had a telephone conference with the US uh, um, a trade uh, representative deputy. And we are now going to make a supplement, supplementary submission where we make our offer in terms of quotas. So basically saying, I think we won't go up from these very low levels and or that we will also not be this conduit in for cheap, uh, maybe Chinese goods through South Africa into the US. So I think once that's done, we should hear from the US in the next uh, in the next month, I think during the course of April, whether we are part of those exempted countries. So yes, so we're trying to put out that fire. And generally, there's a bigger fire burning around trade wars and what trade wars could mean for the world. Um, and it's, at this stage, it's too early to say whether a trade war has been really sparked by Donald Trump's actions, President Donald Trump's actions, or whether it hasn't, and, and, and whether this trade war have uh, an impact on countries like ours. But what our trade and industry minister said is that, you know, when the elephants fight, the amps, ants get damaged, and that's what would probably be, be the, the case um, if, if there were a serious breakout of trade war between China and the US. The two elephants would fight and uh, the rest of us ants would be hurt in the process. So yes, we are trying to get that exemption, but we're also keeping a, a very watchful eye on what's happening between the US and China at the moment. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.